and there is enough scientific data that points to a concern for increased cancer rates in humans. Well, the whole RBGA thing represents fundamental flaws in the regulatory process. We allow BGH to go on. I'm sure that we are taking excessive risk with society. Our choices about the foods we eat are among the most important decisions we make about our health. Our bones, organs, and cells are built of food. Even our mood, energy level, and ability to think clearly are affected by what we buy at the grocery store. As our food changes, so do we. But are the changes taking place in our food supply beneficial? Consider milk, the traditional symbol of purity and nutrition, especially for children. But some milk has undergone a radical change. It's not the same wholesome milk our grandparents drank. And many experts believe this altered milk is leading to cancer and other serious problems. The altered dairy products were introduced in 1994 when farmers started injecting their cows with RBGH. RBGH stands for recombinant bovine growth hormone, which means genetically engineered bovine growth hormone. RBGH is also known as RBST. It's the same thing. It is a genetically engineered hormone developed to force cows to produce more milk, typically 5 to 15 percent more milk. It speeds up their metabolism where they will eat more feed and they'll give more milk. Jeffrey Smith is an international best-selling author and expert on the health risks of genetically engineered foods. Nearly one out of every six dairy cows in the United States are injected with this pharmaceutical drug, which critics call crack for cows. Studies show that it decreases the nutritional content while it increases the amount of antibiotics, the amount of hormones, and the amount of pus. It's marketed by Monsanto under the brand name Pozolac, and they want more cows in this stuff. Of course, you'll want to inject Pozolac to every eligible cow, as each cow not treated is a lost income opportunity. To make RBGH, scientists take genes from cows and insert them into E. coli bacteria. The new genetically engineered E. coli then produces the cow's hormone. Bovine growth hormone stimulates another powerful hormone called IGF-1, insulin-like growth factor 1. The milk from treated cows has much higher levels of IGF-1, and that's a big problem. Dr. Jenny Pompilio of Oregon Physicians for Social Responsibility told a TV interviewer why her organization is trying to get RBGH taken off the market. But we at Oregon PSR believe in the science, and there is enough scientific data that points to a concern for increased cancer mm -hmm. rates in humans. RBGH increases the IGF-1 in cow's milk, and this is not disputed. It's also not disputed that elevated levels of IGF-1 can promote cancer in humans. A Harvard study showed that men with high levels of IGF-1 are four times more likely to develop prostate cancer. Premenopausal women are seven times more likely to develop breast cancer. It's implicated in lung and colon cancer. And a recent study implicated IGF-1 in a higher rate of fraternal twins. In fact, in the United States, we have twice the rate of increase of fraternal twins than in the UK, where RBGH is banned. Almost all the industrialized countries of the world have banned this. This includes Canada, Australia, New Zealand, Japan, and all 25 countries of the European Union. Not only that, but the Codex Alimentarius, which is the UN's main food safety body, voted and said, we cannot guarantee that this is safe. A European Commission report stated that avoidance of RBGH dairy products in favor of natural products would be the most practical and immediate dietary intervention to achieve the goal of preventing cancer. The approval of RBGH in 1993 was probably one of the most controversial decisions the FDA ever made. There's a revolving door between Monsanto and the FDA. The person in charge of policy at the FDA when RBGH was approved was Michael Taylor, Monsanto's former attorney and later their vice president. Margaret Miller worked on RBGH issues doing research for five years at Monsanto and then became FDA branch chief in the division that evaluated her own research. Susan Sechin worked for Monsanto doing research on RBGH and then became the primary FDA review officer for RBGH. One of the main problems with the FDA review of the drug was that they treated it as an animal drug and didn't look at it as a human drug. So they failed to take into consideration most of the possible health effects. A human drug requires two years of carcinogenicity testing and extensive birth defect testing. BGH milk was tested 90 days on 30 rats at any dose before it was approved. 
Well, the whole RBGH thing represents fundamental flaws in the regulatory process. The outside influence, the lack of proper um, structure, proper personnel to do the job that the, we trust them to do. That The FDA does no studies. The companies do the studies and they send the paperwork to the FDA who then reviews it. I found flaws in it that according to regulation and good science should have been addressed. This was pro approved prematurely without adequate information. When Dr. Burroughs kept demanding more tests, they said he was holding up the approval process and so they fired him. We allow BGH to go on. I'm sure that we are taking excessive risk with society. Monsanto dismisses the concerns of scientists and physicians around the world. It's unfortunate that the public is being scared, you know, in other words, uh, being frightened by an, by an issue that should, shouldn't be of concern. One former Monsanto scientist told me that his colleagues who were doing safety studies on RVGH switched to organic milk for themselves because they were concerned about the health risks. This is uh, not something that knowledgeable people have concerns about. When scientists in the Canadian government reviewed the FDA's approval of RBGH, they wrote a scathing report saying that the FDA's approval failed to properly address the human safety requirements of the drug, including possible sterility, infertility, birth defects, cancer, and immunological derangements. Pozzolac is the single most tested new product in history and is now available to you specifically so you can increase your profit potential. Canadian government scientists testified in 1994 that they were being pressured to approve RBGH even though they thought it was unsafe, that documents were stolen from a locked file cabinet in a government office, and that Monsanto's representative offered them one to two million dollars to approve the drug without further study. This alleged bribe was part of the coverage of a four-part news series prepared by Fox television reporters Jane Acri and Steve Wilson. Monsanto Canada, whose representative allegedly raised the subject of money... At the In the fall of 1994, Canadian television quoted a Canadian health official as reporting that Monsanto offered one to two million dollars if her government committee would recommend BGH approval in Canada without further data or studies of the drug. Another member of her committee who was present when Monsanto made the offer was asked, was that a bribe? Is that how it struck you? Certainly. Monsanto said the report alleging bribery was a blatant untruth and that Canadian regulators just didn't understand the offer of money was for research. Monsanto demanded a retraction. The Canadian Broadcasting Company stands by its story. The FDA doesn't require labels on dairy products from cows treated with RBGH. In fact, Monsanto sued dairies that labeled their products as RBGH free. In 2003, for example, Monsanto sued Oakhurst Dairy for labeling on their carton no artificial hormones. Oakhurst had to settle with Monsanto by including a disclaimer sentence on their carton which said, FDA states, no significant difference in milk from cows treated with artificial hormones. Oregon PSR strongly disagrees with this disclaimer because of the scientific data that we've been talking about today. Investigative reporter Jane Acri said this concept that there's no difference in the milk from cows treated with RBGH is one of many fabrications that she discovered while doing an investigative report on RBGH for a Fox TV station in Tampa. The deceptions from Monsanto, the deceptions were numerous. The milk, you know, the, the cornerstone is the milk is the same wholesome product that it's always been. What they need to know is that the milk hasn't changed. And, and that's the important thing here, the milk hasn't changed. And that was something that they kept repeating. And even though you could show them their own studies that show there's an increase in IGF-1, I mean, certainly not the same product. How can you be saying that? In addition to more IGF-1 in the milk, there's also more bovine growth hormone. Now, the researchers claimed that this hormone was largely destroyed during pasteurization, but it turns out they pasteurized the milk 120 times longer than normal. The drug also increases an infection, a painful infection in the udder called mastitis, and this in turn increases the amount of pus in the milk. Because of the mastitis, dairy farmers use more antibiotics, and this cannot help but increase antibiotic resistance in humans, which is a major increasing health problem. So, for example, if you drank milk that had residues of erythromycin in it, then bacteria in your stomach could pick up resistance to that erythromycin so that if you came down with an illness, you wouldn't be able to use erythromycin to treat. Dr. Michael Hansen is a scientist with Consumers Union, the publisher of Consumer Reports. Dr. Hansen and some members of Congress received an anonymous letter allegedly from FDA employees claiming that there was fraud and conflict of interest at the FDA. So with all of these different changes in the milk, 
the IGF-1, the bovine growth hormone, the antibiotics, and the pus, who do you suppose wrote the disclaimer for the FDA claiming that the agency said that there's no difference? It was Monsanto's former attorney, Michael Taylor, who was in charge of FDA policy from 1991 to 94 before becoming Monsanto's vice president. Most organizations went along with the FDA's initial approval because they trusted them in the approval process. The American Medical Association supported passage of RBGH. However, a year later, their Council on Scientific Affairs came out with a statement saying that IGF-1 needed to be studied further. Ron Davis, president of the American Medical Association, wrote on April 24, 2008, that hospitals should use milk produced without recombinant bovine growth hormone. The National Institutes of Health had indicated that the IGF-1 issue needs a little more looking at. The American Cancer Society, some spokesperson had made a statement, and I went to that spokesperson and I said, Do you, have you really signed off on this? And he said, no, we, we think that the IGF-1 issue probably needs some more investigation. Another big concern is that RBGH can be devastating to the health of cows. But according to Congressman John Conyers, Monsanto and the FDA have chosen to suppress and manipulate animal health test data in efforts to approve commercial use of BGH. They just went out and skewed the data. So yeah, it was bad science and bad, <laughs> bad regulation. Documents stolen from the FDA and later made public show that when Monsanto's researchers wanted to prove that injections did not interfere with cows' fertility, they apparently added cows to the study that were pregnant before they ever got injected. Charles Knight is one of many farmers who say RBGH burns out cows, shortening their lives by maybe two years. And about that same time is when we started having a lot of foot trouble. We dealt with that, and that's where we lost a lot of our cows is through they got so crippled they couldn't walk. Knight says he replaced 75% of his herd due to hoof problems and mastitis. He says when he called Monsanto, they never mentioned company research that showed hundreds of cows on other farms were suffering from the same issues. It was overwhelming because they, you know, they said, you're the only person that's having this problem, so it's got to be what you're doing. While it appears that Monsanto wanted to deny the problems with cow's health, now these side effects are listed right on the product warning label. This is actually the package insert, and on the back are listed all the 16 different medical conditions that can be associated in cows. So it's very difficult on the cows, and virtually every animal protection agency in the country has criticized RBGH. Yeah. Monsanto works really hard to stop negative coverage on RBGH. They had a, a PR firm, and that PR firm created this dairy coalition, and they bragged in their internal memos how they had gotten a reporter taken off the case at the New York Times, so that the, that the link between RBGH and cancer was never reported. They also talked about how they went after USA Today and many other papers trying to suppress any negative news coverage. In 1997, Fox Television was going to run its four-part news series on RBGH, but two letters from Monsanto's attorney one promising dire consequences to Fox and its owner, ultimately canceled the series and the reporters were fired. In fact, the lawyer for Fox said, this story isn't worth a couple hundred thousand dollars to go up against Monsanto. In recent years, several organizations have been educating consumers about the health risks of RBGH and it's having a profound impact. Company after company is going RBGH free in response to consumer demand. RBGH is a house of cards, and the foundation of RBGH is consumer ignorance. Because once consumers find out about the problems associated with this hormone, then they don't want to have anything to do with it, and they vote with their dollars and start buying RBGH free products. Healthcare Without Harm, which is an international coalition of over 400 organizations dedicated to safe and healthy practices in hospitals, issued a formal position statement opposing RBGH. We're now currently seeing hospitals all over the country going RBGH free. Many schools have banned RBGH, and that's critical because children are most at risk from the potential dangers. Even minute fluctuations in hormones can be very important in growth and development. So this is especially concerning for children. And for her, now that she's eating regular people food, we want to give her as much good stuff without the chemical additives as possible. I'm talking to you today as a physician, but also as a mother. Mm. I have a beautiful 15-month-old boy 
and it's one of my top priorities to make sure that he grows up to be as healthy as possible. So I want to avoid RBGH and I only purchase RBGH free products. There are two kinds of RBGH free products. First, there's organic. Organic, by definition, will not allow the use of this hormone. Second are conventional RBGH free products. And again, look at the label. We have several examples of RBGH free labeling. The first is from Alpenrose Dairy and they note RBST free. Dairy Gold notes this milk comes from cows not treated with the growth hormone RBST. Ben and Jerry's ice cream makers note we oppose recombinant bovine growth hormone. When Ben and Jerry's became one of the first companies to label their products, some people criticized this as just a way to sell more of their ice cream. You know, so if you want to say it's in our self-interest, yeah, we want to keep our customers alive. You know, they <laughs> eat more when they're alive. <laughs> we think we've reached a tipping point with RBGH, that this will snowball and that at some point in the not too distant future will be RBGH free. By the same token, we can see the same thing happening with genetically engineered foods in general. The same challenge is educating the public. Once people realize about the health and environmental risks of genetically engineered foods in general, the same thing will happen. The whole story of GE or genetically engineered foods, including soy, corn, cottonseed, and canola, it's just like the RBGH story. Monsanto's former attorney was in charge of policy at the FDA, company research was rigged, news coverage was suppressed, and the entire population is exposed. And just as dangerous as RBGH is for health, the dangers of GE foods may be even more damaging. The Institute for Responsible Technology and its coalition partners are pioneering the campaign for healthier eating in America, which is designed to end the genetic engineering of the food supply. But just as consumer education hit the tipping point in RBGH, so too the campaign for healthier eating in America is expected to hit the tipping point to drive GMOs out of our food supply. What we need is to get the information out to more parents, more schools, more consumers, so we can all eat healthier, non-genetically engineered diets. To learn more about RBGH, genetically engineered foods, and the campaign for healthier eating in America, see www.responsibletechnology.org.